SAP Fish2 program aims to support the strengthening of fishery management in all member states in African, Caribbean and Pacific group. The Demand Lead program facilitates participating states in partnership with program office to identify strengths and weaknesses in their fishery management system and develop assignment for technical assistance to fishery administration, regional fisheries body, a regional economic organization in solving key problems and exploiting the opportunities. With the effective involvement of the key stakeholders at national and regional level uh, in the program development and individual project design and implementation, SAP Fish2 has, cre has created uh, a network of focal points and concerned individuals and entities working together towards the same objective. The network, which has so far interacted through a periodic workshop and regular consultation on project selection and proposal, allowed uh, to have a common understanding of the key fishes, fisheries management objective and a joint discussion on problems and development priorities in the region. The evolving SAP Fish2 network represents an opportunity for regular and long-lasting consultation among parties and is the result of a participatory approach on the way the program is being implemented. Furthermore, this developing network can be of direct assistance to strengthening institutional capacity of fisheries management in the SAP states for the Southern African region. The theme of my talk is really about the challenge of extending um, our governance and management to an ecosystem scale. Um, we, we really are still set up to, to manage uh, at a national level and, and, and at a sectoral level. And so if we are going to meet this challenge of uh, sustainable ecosystems, we, we need to move to regional and ecosystem approach to fisheries. We all know this. Um, be, being a biologist, when ecosystem approach to fisheries first came along, we started thinking, well, you know, bycatch of birds and looking at all the uh, biology in the ecosystem as a whole. Uh, but human beings are part of the ecosystem, and so, um, you know, traditionally we've looked at them as a sort of a black box and an impact on the ecosystem. But really we need to get into the mechanics of uh, governance and understand the behavior of human beings uh, much better so that we can design um, governance systems at, at a regional and uh, yeah, also at a national level which are going to result in sustainable governance. We're very much in a transition from an old-fashioned um, style of, of fishery management which is very resource focused. But I think the, the first steps have been positive in the sense that uh, there's been ready political buy-in to um, ecosystem uh, approaches to, to fisheries. Um, but the devil's always in the detail. Um, if you are going to have an effective uh, ecosystem approach to fisheries, it represents a radical departure from uh, the management of traditional fisheries. And, and this has got profound implications for the organization of government fishery management. Um, so whereas in the past, fisheries have been really set up in terms of a management protocol within national departments, um, fisheries is now largely uh, framed as, as, as a governance issue. But I'm interested in uh, this shift towards governance, strengthening the governance framework. Uh, I was hoping to hear a little more about what you conceive, what you see as the future in terms of uh, governance of fisheries. And the same applies to the floodplain f fisheries because uh, what you're saying is that the and and and, and with with a lot of force <laughs> that the uh, the model uh, uh, that's based on selectivity and uh, managing fishing effort and restricting the type of gear etc uh, may not be the best approach you know and and, and it's quite convincing in my opinion and uh, both of them has in common the issue okay what is the most appropriate governance arrangement 
uh, for us to move in the future? <laughs> and, and that is still a question that I would like, I'd like to, if, if you could give us a little more information on your thinking regarding uh, uh, this dimension, because it is true, I mean, we have had a lot of problems and we do not have uh, many good successes with the current model that we're using. So it makes a lot of sense for us to look for new ways. Why I appreciate the, uh, the importance of doing the fisheries biology aspects uh, and that we make assumptions in some of the uh, methods that we use. Can we also make an assumption that uh, fisheries management is more about managing the people than managing the fish themselves. In my mind, we can pinpoint, for example, to selectivity and say that is the cause of the problem, but I could argue otherwise and say, in my mind, is purely overcatching. Because if you have got a gear that's selective and you stick to the recommended uh, uh, catches, we still will not be sitting with the problems with, that we're sitting with in many of the fisheries. Uh, failure of politicians to heed the recommendations of the scientists. I don't think scientists are failing. I don't think the models are failing even with the assumptions because some of those are like the best that can be made so it, it's a whole fisheries management perspective. Thank you. Some proponents have talked about governance in terms of uh, sharing power. And now you take the, I mean, the terminology across, maybe sharing two, um, maybe the resources shared among two nations or so. How do you balance up the issue about power? At local level, at the provincial level, and even at, I mean, across the region now from managing the tuna fishery as an individual species towards looking at the ecosystem approach um, and also with the initial species multi-species fishery that that people utilize on the coast um, in terms of what you're collecting for the last how many years 10 years that you're doing on the river system there um, you know, my uh, limited understanding is that you also look at what the species eat and and how that relates to the other species that are within the system. I don't see uh, in your presentation any links between the species in terms of what one eats and the other eats in the system. Is, is that covered in your studies? Thanks really for, for coming, for the big effort that, that you have done. Thanks for the speaker to, to have accepted our invitation to participate to this uh, first network meeting event. Hopefully there will be other, uh, we hope so, uh, during the continuation of the program and, and maybe even after when we left, maybe we will, you will meet alone without us. <laughs> um, um, my, my final special thanks uh, goes to the uh, first of all to Sadak, which hosted us within his premises and, 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 and the steering committee and also the event, uh, to the show for the government of Botswana, which has been represented by the uh, Ministry of Environment, Wildlife and Tourism, which uh, hosted the, 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 the activity in his, in, his, in his country. And yeah, finally for sure, also special thanks to the European uh, Union, uh, which has been rep represented also here, which gave to all, all of us the, the opportunity to be here through this this, this funding of of, uh, of the program.